I'm Emma Gatman, and I'm the chair of the Department of Dermatology at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. So atopic dermatitis, or eczema, how the public may know it, is a very itchy disease that involves erythematous in, or red patches that can be either localized to the face, to the hands, to the folds, or for patients that have severe atopic dermatitis, they may be actually on the entire body. So there is a very strong genetic um, component to atopic dermatitis. Uh, about 80% of the patients will have a family member either with atopic dermatitis or eczema or asthma or hay fever, basically one of the what we call allergic diseases. But 20% of them will not have a history in the family. And um, when you start getting lesions, it's usually within the first year of life. Um, and 85% of the patients will uh, have the atopic dermatitis uh, starting before the age of five. But it's important to know that 15% uh, of the patients actually have atopic dermatitis for the first time in adulthood. Um, again, there is a genetic predisposition, and uh, when we start getting or patients start getting atopic dermatitis, there are increases in immune molecules called cytokines. And um, the immune molecules that are increased are a particularly a, a TH2 cytokines, such as IL-4 and IL-13, and also other cytokines, but IL-4 and IL-13 are many times at the center of atopic dermatitis, and they are the ones that are increased at disease initiation and also when the disease is uh, perpetuated in the chronic form like we have in adults. So, you know, AD is a really devastating disease for a, a patients, particularly those with significant involvement. And when I say significant involvement is atopic dermatitis that is involving multiple body surface areas. A, for example, if you only have a, the disease in the folds, you each very much in the folds. And we need to remember atopic dermatitis is associated with a terrible itch. Uh, when you ask patients sometimes uh, to rate the each uh, between 1 to 10, they will uh, go to 8 to 10. So really a terrible each that uh, bothers their sleep and their well-being. And it really relates to how uh, much of your body surface area is involved. Because if you have only 2 to 3% is one thing. But if you have 30 40%, you can imagine you have no quality of life. You are itching the entire day. You cannot function. You cannot sleep. And many of the patients cannot sleep. And then the next day, they are a wreck at work. They cannot function. Uh, and it was shown that patients with a type dermatitis, have increased divorces, um, they don't perform sometimes well at work, at school, um, and definitely we needed better treatments for atopic dermatitis for these reasons. So, you know, uh, until uh, just a few years back, we didn't have any approved medication for moderate to severe disease patients except oral prednisone. That was changed um, when a, a new a biologic medication, a dupilumab, came along, um, and that medication was approved uh, about four and a half years ago. It's called Dupixent now, and it's a monoclonal a, a, a antibody that is being injected every two weeks, and it targets IL-4 receptor, and this is why it targets IL-4 and IL-13, the immune molecules that I mentioned that are at the center of the disease. A, and now we can treat patients a, with a safer, a, a much safer drug than a, before because oral prednisone and also other immune suppressants that we were giving patients are not possible to give long term because they have many, many side effects. And not only that, for example, when you stop oral prednisone, everything comes back with a vengeance. So we needed better treatments, not only to control the disease, but to enable giving the patients the treatment long term because these are chronic diseases. So eczema or atopic dermatitis, it's a chronic disease and we needed treatments that we can give long term. I'm very excited about uh, the idea of also providing patients with an oral medication because while a uh, dupilumab or dupixent uh, really revolutionized the field of uh, atopic dermatitis because we had a safer drug than before that uh, we could give patients long term, this is an injectable. And as you know, uh, many patients would not like the idea 
idea of injecting themselves every two weeks and would prefer an oral. And in, in the Lancet paper is with an oral medication, an oral JAK1 inhibitor called upadicitinib, and um, um, also will be called Rinvoc. And um, uh, that study showed that both doses, the lower dose, the 15 milligrams and the 30 milligrams, the higher dose, were highly efficacious for patients with atopic dermatitis. And the beauty of it was that the induction of the response was quite rapid. So within the first few days already, the itch was much better controlled, uh, really within a few days. And by week four, most of the uh, effect of the drug was already achieved and maintained uh, towards week 16, that was the primary endpoint. So very quick mechanism of action uh, of this drug to alleviate uh, the itch and also uh, uh, improve the red patches that the disease is associated with. So at week 16, uh, many patients were clear or almost clear. In fact, this drug achieved perhaps the best clearance in rates that we've seen so far at week 16. So very good ability to treat the itch very quickly and also to clear patients at week 16, not only with the highest dose, but even the second dose. So I'll tell you a secret, it may not be such a secret, but I myself had atopic dermatitis in childhood and adolescence, and even now I have it, but it used to be much worse than now. Now, now I only have it mild in the winter sometimes. And I guess it's close to home. I wanted to, to find a solution to something that is very dear to my heart. And also my entire family is allergic. My daughter has atopic dermatitis. My son has asthma or had asthma. So, you know, it was something that I was very passionate about. Yeah, it's a super exciting time for uh, this disease, in both in terms of topicals that are developed now, because we also didn't have any topicals approved for a long time. And those that are approved either have black box warning or um, are only mildly efficacious. So now there will be a new generation of topicals also. Uh, jack inhibitors that are coming to atopic dermatitis. And in terms of a uh, systemic, so we have oral jack inhibitors uh, coming that will provide a, a fast relief of each uh, to our patients. There are additional uh, new biologic agents coming, uh, very exciting. We have some IL-13 antagonists, very specifically targeting only IL-13. And we have some additional molecules that have uh, suggested uh, from early cl uh, clinical trials that may maybe they are disease modifying, and this is a new concept for atopic dermatitis, such as a OX40 antagonists. Uh, so as I tell my patients, the future is much brighter. And we need to remember, this is the most uh, common disease we now have in, a, in a, a dermatology, but I think in general, this is the most common inflammatory disease at all. Uh, from all the inflammatory diseases. It involves 7% of the American population and 20 to 30% of these are moderate to severe. So definitely there is a huge unmet need for patients with more severe disease and also with mild disease. 